Hey guys, welcome back for part two of the engine build with my buddy, AKA Conrad <laughs> here. I love how you guys call him buddy. Uh, <laughs> we're, gonna, yeah, we're gonna continue with the engine build. Um, we'll start with uh, where we were last time. Yeah. Not exactly at the end of the video. Um, we actually uh, assembled this incorrectly. Got some feedback from you guys. Thank you very much. Actually, um, Lee Jenkins from uh, um, Hard tech uh, helped out there. We actually ended up putting oil underneath the bearing on, on the mains and that was not a good thing. So we disassembled, cleaned it up nicely, assembled it properly. So make sure that when you assemble this first part, do not put oil under, uh, under the bearings. Now, you can see now this turns nice, nice and easy with just the proper amount of oil. Uh, also wanted to give uh, a shout out to uh, uh, Jake Raby, uh, following his um, in tutorial, instructions, guidance. Uh, he's really good at getting back through uh, Messenger and stuff. Uh, really appreciate his guidance. Uh, there are also other, uh, I used a 997 DAD to disassemble the engine. Really good guide to, to disassemble. Um, and then man in a garage, uh, Finn, uh, thank you very much. He's been in touch with him. Also has some great pointers as to how to do things cost effectively. And, and also help me DIY. Has yeah, help. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, the channel. That we're, but the point is there's so many resources out there, right? Uh, 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 Yogi's garage as well. We, we, uh, we're a good community and, and uh, like to help each other. But all right, with that said, as people say, we were using K1 rods uh, that I got from LN. And uh, oh, actually, let's go over the parts first. So these so, are beautiful. So the these way. are the work of art K1 uh, rods. I've already balanced them, uh, shaved them, so they're, they're uh, evenly matched and, and balanced. We've got bought a special uh, balancer. We've got our calico coated uh, OEM uh, bearings. Uh, these are going to go on. Uh, on the rods here. All right, everything has been cleaned. Uh, we have our IMS, the uh, the rubber thingies for the baffle, uh, and a couple of uh, paddles to hold the chains in place. These are three chains and the bolts and um, uh, 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 circlips that are needed to install these things. So on this step, the purpose is going to be we're going to we're going to install the rods on bank one, bank two. I'm sorry, bank two. Yes, bank two, six by four. The the rods on bank two, and we're going to install the chain, uh, the the IMS with uh, uh, with its chains, getting ready to assemble uh, the um, this into the crankcase. So we're going to start very simply by taking these rods and as we did with the mains just assembling these nice and easy so you've got that little tang little tang goes over there oh and i'm wearing gloves this time around we got some interesting feedback from people saying yeah wear gloves no don't wear gloves don't wear gloves so i'm trying gloves this time uh jake uh prefers not to wear gloves i think uh lee wears gloves and various people do various things so i'm, I'm just experimenting uh right now wearing gloves. You still have, have the feel. The, oh, sorry, the best way is put the tang in, align the tang, hold it, and sort of press it, make sure your glove doesn't get caught. And that these are, uh, there's, oh, oh one, one thing that's, there's only one way these, these go, these are cracked. They have serial numbers on them. And the, you know, I don't know if, you, if it's coming through, but the serial number is on one side and not on the other side. These only go in one way. They don't fit nicely if you try to mess with them. So keep them, keep them there. These are K1s with ARP bolts. They have a special lube to assemble them. Um, so uh, these actually came fairly tight from LN. Uh, That's is, an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so just before installing the bearings, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that these are super clean underneath. Jeez, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> you need that much. The 
Is this like a carb cleaner you're using on here? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the carb cleaner. Not the brake cleaner, but the carb cleaner for that. Um, let's go ahead and clean all of them. And then we'll do the installation. I've got a stretch gauge, never used it before. We'll figure that out. Uh, they recommend they recommend using a stretch gauge for these bolts, uh, even though they also give you the alternative torque and angle um, method of doing it. So there's a number. Put these bolts out. Remember, put the tang. All right, and remember, assemble them dry, as they're supposed to be. Put the numbers facing you. All right. Put these bolts out. And these are 12.11 uh, millimeter, as we learned today. Yes, 12.11 millimeter, brand new tool that we had to go out and buy in a pinch, <laughs> um, just to make sure that we were all prepped. Beauty of having Aaron push me here to take the next step in assembly. Otherwise, I would be doing this in about a month. So thank you. Thank you, Aaron. All right, one more. Last one on this side. Again, the technique is the tang, hold it, and then line it best you can. Numbers, numbers. All right. So the one thing her and I spent a lot of time doing, because we don't want to uh, redo this, is having the proper position of the assembly relative to the rods that you're going to put in. So let's see. Uh, keep me honest. This is the IMS chain side. It also is the side that has the pin. It is the side that will connect the flywheel, right? Yes. Am I right that so far? Flywheel side. Yeah, flywheel side, pin side, IMS side. This side, mm -hmm. the first bank here is cylinder number six. Yes. All right. In this particular case, we have the pin. The pin side is where we're going to assemble these rods. All right. So because I don't want to do this again, <laughs> Aaron and I label this six, skip one, five, skip one, four, right? You have these little ball bearing thingies here um, and the pin. This is the way to assemble them, all right? Yes, just so you're oriented properly. <laughs> the, the bottom of this is where this baffle um, is, is going to be uh, eventually assembled you know, on top. So super important to get this right. All right. So we have a, a sheet provided to us by K1 where you can actually write down all of the measurements of your bolts before and after torquing to make sure that they have the correct stretch. And we have this uh, gauge here that we just learned how to use. So, we think. Um, possibly. Uh, so we just want to show you how we figured out how to use it, hopefully. Yep. And um, while K1 gives us specs, uh, they, they, gave us, they gave us a stretch spec, which is a preferred, but they also give us a torque and angle spec. So we're going we're gonna, to, you know, we're going to shoot for the stretch, but we're going to use this as a reference uh, point. Yeah, so if well. you don't have one of these, you can just use their torque. An angle. An angle. Yep, because with our handy dandy torque and angle. It should be so, good enough, but we'll be able to actually measure it. So, it. one thing to keep in mind is um, on these K1 rods, you have the tang side. Let me put this down. You have the tang side that has a serial number. Match the serial number, tang side. All right? Keep those, uh, keep those in place. Jake recommends... Uh, just for consistency, the tang side towards the uh, IMS uh, cradle, the back towards IMS baffle tray, um, just for consistency. And then what I did is I labeled one of these bolts blue and one of these bolts yellow. So when I measured it, here I have a blue tang side, yellow non-tang side, 
Um, and the way to measure this bolt, these ARP bolts have a nice indent on either side. You put this on the indent and you measure them here. So this one is the way to read this if, if it is 0.2 from this gauge. Two nine zero. So point two two nine zero. Two two nine zero blue. That's going to be the tang side. And you have a yellow non-tang side. So measurement. Unstretch bolt. Point two three seven zero. 0.2371 is what I had before, but 0 0.2370. All right. And what you're looking here is a stretch of 0.5 to 0.59. Oh, we didn't see which um, part number we had because there's a different stretch. Um, we're going to need to confirm that. But you get the stretch, the recommended stretch, and the torque and angle specs before and after. And then we're going to show how we're... And on the first assembly, how we put the tool in, tighten it by hand, measure, confirm the measurement, and then we'll do the stretch. Yeah, so just to practice, uh, oh, yeah. it would probably be good just to have one bolt in one of these things and just use the tool while it's outside of the case because it's a lot easier to maneuver sure. around <laughs> and figure out how things work because we tried the first one just dry finning it in here and we couldn't There's figure out how to get the tool in there and line it up and all that stuff. So what you want to do is, ha once you have the bolt, you're going to fit the tool. Top first. Top first, we found that. And then what you want to do is make sure that it fits the bottom there, right? Because there's a little uh, recess in there where your bolt is going to be. Yeah. And then make sure it's seated properly on the bottom and then you get your measurement. It should be the same right now. Yeah. <laughs> When in doubt, you can measure the bolt because they tell you what these bolt sizes are here. <laughs> While we figure out which part <laughs> numbers these are to see what the torque should be, we're just going to go ahead and uh, assemble them by hand because that's the first step you have to do anyway. Right. Um, so I think it starts with assembly lube. Yep. And and again, uh, we're going to keep the right direction. There's there's a tang on these K1 rods. There's a tang side, and that tang side has a serial number. And we're going to keep that in this arrangement towards the bottom. And the tang side of the cap is on the same side. Yes. yes. Cap. They match. Yep. They're, they're a match for the tangs. And, and we're going to put the blue marked thingy on the uh, bolt on the tang side until we figure out what the um, specs are. All right. So first thing is we're going to lubricate these nicely. Um, and while in some instances motor oil is recommended, I'm still using the assembly lube because it's probably going to take me a long time to do anyway. <laughs> so a little bit of juice there. And yes, guys, we're not leaving any brushes. Yes. We're, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're always inspecting them. Got two sets of eyes. Much younger eyes. And a camera. Aaron. <laughs> and a camera. We can go back. And we are not shy about disassembling <laughs> this and trying it again, right? Yeah, I was telling Conrad, that's one of my favorite things about making these videos is that everything I'm doing on my videos is the first time I've done it. This is Conrad's first time doing this. Yep. So a huge benefit is not only for you guys to see how to do it, but for other people watching, telling us what we're doing wrong so we can come back and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're using you and you just don't know it. So thank you for participating yes. in our exactly. engine build. So, so that's the, uh, what do they call that? The connecting rod um, journal? Or, uh, well, that, that would be the crank um, I don't know, journal. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so that's the part that we're going to connect the connecting rod to. <laughs> yes, it's the part that we're going to connect the connecting rod to. Remember, six. This is part of our measure twice. All right, now comes the hair inspection, right? All right. Dang it, no hairs. All no right. miscellaneous fibers. No miscellaneous fibers, no miscellaneous fibers. All right. 
So here we go. Tang side towards the bottom. Oh, so so what has been suggested by Jake is put this um, on top, right? Intro oh, wait, wait, no. Introduce the cap side. On this side, being very, very careful. All right. Move it just to higher. All right, so the serial number down. Very careful not to mess things up. Here we go. Press that a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Nice mate. All right. So the blue is the tang side, which is the bottom. So we'll go on this side here, put the bolt and tighten it by hand. Can you see that? And so hand tight action. Mm -hmm. With our handy dandy 11 millimeter 12 point socket. So if, not, we were getting one, if we were getting one on Amazon. Oh probably... shoot, you know what we forgot? There we go, see? Got the lube, even though these came in already with the lube on them for some reason. Um, we we want to lube. Ah, yes. Nice. <laughs> All right, so here is the K1 lube. They suggest to lubricate the threads nicely. And they also suggest to lubricate, yeah, I can't get in there. Under the head. Yeah. Under the head. So yeah, you can either lubricate it like that, or I was suggesting what you might be able to do is just put lube here on the top of the cap. Might be easier than going under the bolt, but either way, it's got lube on it. Yep. The important thing is getting lube. You're not gonna do a one one of those, that's what she said jokes, right? Uh, it's waiting. <laughs> it's waiting for the crowd to insert the round. <laughs> All right. So here we go, we got threads, oops. It's quite a bit. This is special ARP. So these are K1 rods. They come with the ARP bolts. Um, they specifically instructions say to um, lubricate, where is it? Assembly. Lubricate the threads and under the head of the bolt with the lubricant provided. Super important to do that. We almost missed it. Yes. Um, and then we're just tightening it by hand, nothing major. We are going to have to go back to ARP or, or Jake <laughs> to see if we can get a nice spec for this. And I was gonna mention that if we were ordering these 11 point, or 11 millimeter, 12 point sockets on Amazon or somewhere else, we would have probably gotten the uh, impact version right. of them, but this is what uh, O'Reilly's had. We're in a pinch. So this is now hand tightened. Nothing's holding back. <clears throat> the recommendation is to tighten them a little bit more, but we are we are going to go, um, I guess, with just the hand tight for now until we get the right specs. So did we miss anything, Aaron? I don't think so. We lubricated yeah. the bearing. We lubricated the journal. Mm -hmm. We put them on in the correct order. We lubricated the we bolt. pre-measured right. the bolts. Mm -hmm. We wrote that down. So now we'll just go through the other two and measure those bolts. Mark exactly. them. Write them down. Lube, lube, lube. Triple lube. <laughs> you got to lube the bolts too. Yep. And uh, assemble. All right. So I'm going to... Do a quick measurement of the bolt. I'm gonna so this is the blue one. It's gonna go tank side. Yellow one is going to be non-tank side. And this is gonna be for five. So rod five. I don't know why I did it that way, but um so zero out the tool, measure the blue one, tank side. And that is precisely 
three, and just a hair, zero, point two three zero two, let's call it. All right, four significant digits. All right, after doing some measuring of these bolts, we realized that they are the ones on the bottom. They're 1.8 yes. inch in length. So we're gonna go with those torque specs. So it says 30 foot pounds and then mm -hmm. 60 degrees. So we're gonna start out at 20 foot pounds. 20 foot pounds. People recommend doing about two thirds and working your way up to it. So we'll do 20 foot pounds on each bolt and then 30 foot pounds on each bolt. So here's my 20, I wanna get to 20. So we are going to do 20 on, you gonna hold that. That's 20. We creep up on the torque. All right, so what's recommended is two thirds first. All right, is that still sort of loose? And right. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna go with 30. All right, not much more. That's 30. So um, what this recommends is plus 60 degrees. So I'm wondering if we're gonna hit that stretch, if we should go with 60 degrees mm -hmm. and then measure the stretch. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just All right. do one like it says and then, because they also pointed out that these bolts are reusable. That's so right. So if it is too much stretch or too we little, we can adjust. Unstretch. All right, so. All right, 60 degrees. All right. All right, you ready? I will hold. You got it held? Got it. 60 degrees. Here we go. So it should be start at the air and angle. Flat. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Ready? 40, 50. Oh man, that was, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do the other one and then we'll measure both, okay? Yeah. So uh, we clear it? What do you do? We clear it? Yeah. Then air and angle. 60 degrees, here we go. Fifty. All right. So that is pretty tight. Whew. That is. As the Germans say, good and tight. <laughs> here. So now so we, we are going to do our best. No, 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 no. We're going to do it at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Middle, right? yeah. the technique That's what we learned. that worked. This is the blue, okay. It's in there in the back. I'm trying to get it settled. Okay. Oh, let me get a light. from here. All right, there it is. Oh, geez. Uh, point two 
I remember this already. 0.26. This looks like a lot more stretch, but let's see. 0.2. No, 0.3. Now we're at point. Can you rotate this? Yeah. How did you rotate? There you go. Ah! You just changed my measurement. I thought this was. For the before and after. I had that. I had that for my absolute measurement. I thought the outside dial turned. No, but changing you, the measurement. No, you changed the entire thing. Oh no! Yeah. Let's try it over again. So what are we shooting for? Point. Because that seems a lot more stretch than zero point zero seven. Just, just to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way I was measuring it. So the original the original measurement was here. So so I'm I'm going to measure the resulting measurement from zero. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna use these seconds okay. yet. Jesus, that's a lot more than right, it's point two point two six seven. Okay. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so the top one was a lot more than we expected. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to measure the bottom, assuming it should be the same or similar. Seems a lot more reasonable. That is point two four point two four three zero. Point two four three zero. Point two four three zero. That would be thirty. Plus 30, 60. Yeah, that, that's correct. Right, that's a 60, 60th stretch. Right, because it, yeah. a yeah. 70 stretch here would result in 440, right? Mm -hmm. So that one is right. Mm. How could we miss it by that much? Well, the nice thing is reusable mm -hmm. ARP bolts. Yeah. One good measurement, one bad measurement. Okay. Let's take that bolt. Well, shoot. Take it out and remeasure. Yeah, but um, we would have to do the take other the one other as one well. Too. Yeah. Right. I mean. As well. <laughs> All right. Don't pinch your finger. So I'm not too worried about that. It was the top one, right? Yeah, it was the top one. So we can take it out and remeasure it. See if it well, I'm gonna. Re I want to remeasure it in situ. Yeah. Now that it's loose. Come on. Point two four point two four four two. So that's. Different? Yep. Very much so. I should might as well measure them. Yeah. I'm gonna do one more measurement on this just to make sure. Okay. What was the very first one we measured? Maybe we just did. Point two four four zero. Yeah. Point two three. Eight zero, or is that seven? Point two three seven zero, right? I think so. Point two three seven zero. Yeah. <laughs> two three. Yeah. Okay. So that one didn't change. So that's good. So did did I make a mistake on measuring the first one? Maybe. So if, if it was two four four and it went to two six seven, that's still still too much, but. 
much more accurate. Let me measure it one more time. Point two four four zero. Yeah, point two four four two. All right. <laughs> Let's do this part again. <laughs> All right. Let me get my Back torque to wrench. Twenty foot pounds. All right. Let's do the top one. Foist. Okay. Thirty. I wonder if we should measure it. Yeah, it doesn't serve any purpose. Measuring it at thirty doesn't. Yeah, we could always do 30, 30 degrees. degrees. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> it also is very notchy. It's not like it goes nice and hmm. soft. So I don't know if that's part of it. 30 degrees? Yeah, let's try 30 degrees. When did you get that token? <laughs> All right, we're going to do 30 degrees now. All right. It shouldn't be that exciting. Right. Here we go. 30 degrees. Drum roll. Did we flip the measurements? This is the, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been doing, this is the top one. When that's the blue bottom one. Dang it. We have been, but we, we know that this is 2442. Four, two. Yeah, that's and the top one. And it's a top one, one and it is a yellow, yellow one. one. Yes. <laughs> Everybody at home was screaming at us as we wrote them down. That's the wrong one. Yeah. All right. Two. Four. four oh, you better. Nine. Give me nine. Nine. Yes. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> That's two four nine zero. So much better. <laughs> what I, I no I didn't. Two four nine zero. So what does that and that's mean? That's at thirty degrees. So we need to go a little bit more. Two four nine zero. What what is that? That's we stretched it by. That's uh, fifty. A little bit less than fifty. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What's the bottom one? All right. <laughs> Be paying more attention, Aaron. <laughs> we haven't been in the zone. I haven't been in the zone. All right, ready? Look at the number. Yep. Point two, two four. four, one zero. Oh, okay. That was forty. Point four then. Point oh oh four. Yes. So, how much do we need? Mm, that. Is the big two four one zero that's 40. Uh -huh. So we have 40 and we have how much do we have here? Like 48. 50 ish, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And we and our objective is 70. Yes. Right? Yep. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> so uh, another 15 degrees? I, I'd rather creep up on it. Yeah. If you don't mind measuring it. 15 can degrees. Me. Because I think as soon as we dial it in, then it's going to be the same for all of them. Oh, yeah, probably. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, so we'll do 15 degrees, you think? Yeah, I think so. Half Halfway to what they... Yeah. Half dun, dun, dun. On, on both of them, you think? Or, or should we just try one? i do them all the same. And then we'll... Because this one was 4.8 and this one was 40. Um, the top one was 4.8. So let's do the top one 15. Right. Should we measure it or? It's your engine. It's up to you. They're supposed to be even yeah, to measure, I guess, anyway. So I would do them both. <laughs> it's your engine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it would be just fine however we leave it, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? For education and for science, we will dial it in as much as we can. Point two. 
Yeah. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. One. Wow. It changed almost nothing. It was two, four, nine, zero before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm reading it wrong. Ah, it, ah, it's ah, five, zero. Really? No, point. No, the, the, the shadow of the stupid thing yeah. was, was pointing the thing. <laughs> so it's two, five. Yeah, it's two, five. Okay, yeah. Two, five, even? Yep, even. Two, five, zero, zero? Yep. All right, so then we're at 58. Um, two, two, four, no. Two, five. You said two, five, zero, zero. Point two. Give me a second. Oh, let me measure this. <laughs> okay. Point two. Five zero zero. Okay, it is two five zero zero. Okay, yep. so then, yeah, I'm thinking sixty degrees is about right on the money then. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's measure the one at the bottom. Point two four. No, no, point two, four, two, zero. Two, four, two, yep, another 10. Another 10 on that one. Because this one was two, five, mm -hmm. zero, zero. So they went up another 10. Yep, it's another 15 degrees. No, it was two, five, zero, zero. Yep, two, five, zero, zero. So that was so it an up, even. It went up 10 from there. Yep. It was two four nine zero. This went up ten yep. as well. It's so another fifteen degrees. Should get us another ten, which would be like right at point seven. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Which is the sixty degrees that they recommended before. Yes. That's weird, but I'm, I must have made a mistake. In I it. feel better about it now. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it twice. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind. I mean. Yeah. All right. Fifteen degree. We'll do the top one first. Yep. It's the first time I've ever measured stretch on a bolt, so it's kind of cool to see how it correlates to uh, the torque. All right. Here we go. Final Painful. I can't believe we're, where we were at the beginning trying to freaking do the measurement up here. <laughs> We've come so far, so We've fast. We've come so far. Point two. Mm, yeah. Five one. Bam. Perfect. Is it? Yeah. We went up another ten, just as anticipated. So we're good, right? Yep. Point two five one. Because we went from point two four four. No, hold on. Point two five one or point two five zero one. Hold on. Time. Point two five zero zero zero. That was oh. the same as before. That's where, yeah, that's where it was before. Last time you had point two five. No, I think I one I, zero. You thought. No, this is dead nuts. Five zero 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 zero. We might need a little bit more. Last time this was two four two zero last time. Point two four two zero. Hmm. So that extra fifteen degrees didn't really didn't change it. Change it. Another fifteen Which degrees? Makes me think that it's so we've gotten point five one essentially. Yeah, we need another 15 degrees. Bit, I'm gonna get I'm more. gonna go again. Alright. Alright, here goes nothing. 15 more. So this will be a total of 75 degrees. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it has anything to do with um it it, it like grabs and then it, it goes. I'm surprised that, that the bolts haven't stretched anymore. Alright. That's my engine, right? <laughs> there we go. Ready? Okay. All right, Bolt. I hope you freaking stretch. <laughs> Point two five two. Oh, that's it. 
Is it? Yeah. All right. That's 70. Makes me think I want to use pencil when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> I think we're going to go with a 60 on all of them from like, you know, the, the 20, 30, mm -hmm. 36, well, maybe just 60. Point two, four, three, five. Three, five. That's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. Yes. All right. There it is. Whew. So it was seventy-five degrees was the magic number. Yep. So we'll go with sixty and measure yeah. next time. All right. Um, did we measure these bolts? Yes, we did. Um, but I'm going to remeasure them just in case. Make sure we put blue, with, so blue with yellow this time. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Actually, the yellow mark is almost worn out. Okay. Point two, so four. So get two, four. One, five. One, five. So that is point five, five, point oh, oh, five, five. And we wanted to get that point oh, oh, seven, oh. Which is consistent with the other which, one. Yeah, so another 15 degrees. To go to 75 degrees, I think will get us there. Two, four, two, zero. Okay, yeah, two, four, one, five was the other one, so two, four, two, zero. Very close. All right. So we're thinking 15 degrees? Yeah. We'll do it? 15 degrees. <laughs> All right, All right point two, four, three, five. That gives us 65. Point two four three. So this needs a little bit more. Oh, 60 then. Mm -hmm. we'll, do a, we'll just just do a hair. A smidge. Yeah, five degrees. All right, so realizing that these extensions mm -hmm. are probably adding a little bit of flex to our calculations. I'm gonna get a little smaller extension here. Less flex. <laughs> And if you have a uh, <coughs> one of the black hardened ones, better probably. One more measurement. Two, four, three, zero. There it is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking awesome how that works, huh? <laughs> All right. So, fellas, measurement. What I've learned is... Uh, You've learned a lot. <laughs> what I've learned is... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go with what they say <laughs> on there and skip uh, But on you know what? A couple of things. Go with what they say yeah. on the torque angle. Yeah. But go with a short um, extension. Yeah. As short of an extension as you can. And preferably yeah. an impact one. I think, yeah. I think that would... I think that would put it on the money. Yeah, and because I can, I can see the... the the wrench starting to measure degrees of flex mm -hmm. without the bolt actually moving. Mm. It was like two or three uh, degrees. Yeah, so right. that, that could be it. Yeah. All right, back to installing a rod, the final rod for this episode. Yes, almost there. <laughs> okay. That is uh, <laughs> learning, <laughs> learning moment. Yeah, learning moment. This is how so we we've roll, been right? over here chatting just. <laughs> Not, about things that are not really important. Non-engine related things. And here's our connecting rod. It's beautiful. I mean, but, but we have perfect, perfect, perfect stretch, I mean, stretch, perfect measurement in uh, cylinder one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. That's where that focus comes in. So, yes, uh, exactly. Disassemble, reassemble. Yeah, really good things that you can re <laughs> reuse these bolts. <laughs> yes. All right, so we got these installed. Yes. They all feel good. They feel nice and easy, nice and good, they consistent. They all feel the same, yes. They're the same. Um, so we've turned this. Pin is up yep. right now. Pin is up. Flipped it up. It was laying this way. It was laying this way. this way. A uh, couple of things uh, for you guys following this at home. Um, Aaron and I got to talking and ended up installing the <laughs> bank four on cylinder one. So we had to redo it. Again, ARP bolts, uh, they are reusable, so we unstretch and stretch them. And the nice thing is, 
we got so much better at measuring stretch from this one to that one. Yeah. And we found out also that it kind of really doesn't make a difference. I think the, the, the specs that K1 has for um, torque and then angle me are pretty close, right? I mean, uh, we were we yeah. were within like a, you know a, a thousandth of of an inch. Yeah. So it was good enough that if I were to do this job, I would probably just skip measuring, go straight <laughs> straight to their torque values. Yeah, and that and that measuring tool is not the cheapest thing in the world. But again, part of what I want to do is I just wanted to learn. Yeah, so, it's pretty cool. Uh, super important to lubricate each one of the bolts to lubricate each one of the. Um, uh, journals make sure that there are no hairs left and so now the, the the next part of the assembly is to do the the IMS uh, with the baffle so this baffle is meant to minimize the aeration uh, we're going to install um, all of these things here the chains the guides and the intermediate shaft uh, one note about this particular intermediate shaft I um, uh, again, thanks, Lee, uh, from, from Hardtech. I went with a SKF bearing, uh, which is open design, so the oil will flow through. Um, he puts these on every engine that he builds, and you know he's one of the most uh, recognized engine builders uh, for Porsche out there. Recommended it. Bought it for $17. The real deal. Say SKF. that again. $17! <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the older bearing wasn't bad. It was a sealed bearing. But uh, it's a fairly easy, um, fairly easy process. So I hear that one of the things that people do with the stock ones is they go in and they just pull the seal off to make it essentially an open yeah. one like that. Yeah, yeah. This one has a huge balls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're not going to touch that. All right. So uh, getting back to this, I, I guess the next thing we need to do is very carefully, we are going to flip this over. Remember, this is the pin. Right, we're going to flip it over one more time. One more time. And we have here with us the um, the galley onto which we're going to place this beautiful. And by the way, it only goes in one. Um, they claim it yeah, only goes in one direction. These, this lines up nicely. Yeah. And if you put it backwards. It lines up not so not there. There's a tab right there. So there is only one way that that this goes. Um, all right. So we're going to look at our references, and and again, the way this is going to be installed is this this piece is going to go up here. You're going to have some chains. You're going to have some guides and and some bolts, um, all of which should be here in some shape or form. So that's what we're going to do next. All right. So here we are. So looking at the hub side, mm -hmm. we decided that the tab goes in the back. Yep. Furthest away from the and, hub side and the pin. And you can tell because it doesn't move really that much there. And here there's a lot more movement. But I mean, it's nearly symmetrical. Okay, so here are my six bolts. And I got my handy dandy uh, fastening specifications from the kit that I bought uh, from uh, Flat Six Innovations, uh, which tells me that the M616, 10 Newton meters for these. So, 10 Newton meters. Where's my thingamajiggy, my body? And what are these E torques, something? These are E10. So these are E10. All right. Yep, I think, pretty sure. Seems to be fine. Help me out, Aaron. Make contribute. sure you put them in the right I hole. Can contribute. So this is the the carrier. Um, it's not really a carrier, I guess, because technically the IMS uh, the shaft does not sit on this plastic, and that's why it's not a consumable part. It sort of floats. But um, again, this is at the bottom of the engine. It is meant to reduce. Um, uh, you know, the, the bubbling aeration of the oil. Um, so I'm sure that has a name. <laughs> Anti-aeration thing. All right, so we're gonna tighten these to 10 Newton meters. I wanna go fast forward on this one. Yeah. And, and anytime you have 
you have these, you want to go from you know the inside out across. Out. So using the smaller torque wrench here, just because it tends to be more accurate, right? Easier to wield. So the big debate is, after I do this one, should I do this one or that <laughs> one? I would do that one. All right. Even though we're gonna go with the Aaron rule on this. Even though I know it doesn't fit. Please doesn't comment, <laughs> um, especially if he's wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we all want to know. We all want to know. Not that this would make that much of a difference, uh, but generally speaking, when you're doing like an oil pan or a transmission pan, they like you to um, to start in the middle and then do a cross, a cross. But that's when that's you have it like squeezes the gasket. Bolts. That's because it squeezes the gasket. Yeah. Liquid evenly. This one we got no gasket. No gasket. Not really critical, but love to hear from mechanical engineers out there. <laughs> Electricians are the best. When I put electrical information out there, they love to yeah. come and correct me and tell me that's not to spec and all that <laughs> stuff. My answer is if you already know how to do this, why are you watching my video? <laughs> Hey, views, man. I thought that was, uh... all right. So what's next? Oh, I guess the next part is these um... gaskets, kind of. Yeah, gaskets. So um, you can see there are two different shapes, so two different part numbers, one with a 45 degree so it matches that, and the other one has like a little kink here. So. Um, you just want to place this. Uh, it is recommended not to put anything like um, glue or or anything on it. I mean, they, they, they'll stay in. There's no way for them to come out, really. So there's no need to put anything to adhere it. And the common wisdom is, you know, if you put something, then if you once you change it, that's more work for the next guy or gal. Just goes nice and easy. You asked, did you ask me off camera about the gloves or not gloves? Yeah. You may yeah. have. Um, I don't know. Uh, so I'm torn. <laughs> uh, I don't really feel a difference. Really, you can. I, I still have that tactile feel. Um, again, there are some that uh, you know Jake doesn't like to wear gloves. There are others. Most people that build engines like to wear gloves. I think it's better for your skin probably if you do wear gloves uh, and you won't have any transfer. Okay, that seems pretty good of, of oils, right? All right, so make sure it's nice and tight in there. And then here's the 45. So we'll, we need better lighting here. I need to get those LEDs. <laughs> That's right. Little by little. And then we're gonna have the uh, intermediate shaft. Ooh, intermediate shaft. It doesn't really ride on this uh, because it's supported on either end. Um, so this is just an oil baffle that prevents, you know, when, with moving parts, it prevents the uh, oil from getting all full of bubbles and stuff. You gotta make sure that it's really <laughs> nice and seated. Yeah, a little finicky, but yeah. So you want to run your Right, I mean, because if, if doing this gets it off. Okay. Oops. Now I see why some people glue it. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go, yeah, there is a little bit of an angle there. Okay. All right. I think that's... Cool. Don't touch it. All right, don't touch it. Next steps. Okay, so we've got our intermediate shaft with all the proper teeth on it, right? And we have our three chain. So this is a three chain uh, motor. It's a, from a 997.1, a 3.8, which is, uh, I'm building to be a 4.0. We have three chains. Um, these two chains are gonna be equal, equal length. And uh, please note that it's important that these are on the sprockets during this point in the, in the assembly process. Uh, because if you don't have them in now, um, you won't be able to, to fit them. And 
uh, it doesn't matter which side we put these, I, I'm putting them opposite of my rods, um, but install them here. This is a dual row, same, same chain here, being fitted on the front part. Right here, make sure to touch all the teeth over there, right? And then you have this chain. So this is, this is the one that uh, has the internal teeth. Super important to keep the engagement on this throughout the build process. Um, the earlier motors had, had chains for the uh, intermediate shaft that look more like these, but um, this one has see, that, that inner tooth. That, so that will move over here. These things are the uh, important ones that ties the IMS with your crankshafts. So right. They get a lot of work. And so in order to fit them, you're going to have to well, first make sure they're not on the pin. All right. They're in there. And then you're going to make sure they're nicely present it there. And there you go. Look at that. So, so that's what your tensioners will do. They'll mm -hmm. pull that in a little bit there. Hourglass and, shape. Right, and you have the little teeth in there. So that's it for now. Uh, and this is going to float a little bit high here, but we're going to put the tensioners in. Um, I think that those that's really the, the final step in this particular part of the process. Um, we are going to fit this tensioner with the three bolts. Super important to have these bolts with the with the washers, and then this tensioner, um, this is a new piece. Uh, it came without the this, which is just goes in. Well, I'm gonna clean it um, again. These have been cleaned. And then it uses a washer and a circlip to fasten. So we'll fast forward a little bit to, to have the last cleaning. Everything that has metal or contact, I just do one last cleaning process. So. Snaps into place. Yeah. In theory. <laughs> now the end of it where the chain tensioner actually presses. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was the bottom. I was looking at the top part. I was wondering where that yeah. nub was. This thing is like <laughs> 70 bucks for this piece. It's weird. Um, all right. Um, we'll do one cleaning of this part. Even though they're brand spanking new, I'm gonna keep everything surgically clean. Can never be too clean. Can never be too clean. And this particular uh, chain guide goes again on on this part. The fl the the flat uh, surfaces, the flat part of the washers, go towards the case. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of lubricant here since it might touch the chain, although I don't think this is a actively um, touching surface, but... The top half of it is. Top half of it is, yeah, probably. This part is, yeah. Yeah. All right, so put a little bit of lube juice, and then you want to tighten your chain here while you put this into position, right? And then arrange your bolts. There are three of these. And remember, these are the bolts with the washers. Um, and using Jake's handy dandy book, this is 10 Newton meters, but always check the latest and greatest spec. See how that's nice and tight there? The chain engagement is still there. Oh, this is dark. I need LEDs. <laughs> so When's your birthday? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get some LEDs for my birthday. <laughs> And then, hopefully this one will go in naturally, and then we'll torque him to 10 Newton meters, and then we'll put the final paddle, and we'll be all set. Again, the important part here is to keep the, um, the chain engaged. 10, all right. So the next part, we built this, right? cleaned it up nicely. So we're gonna lube it. This is going to be some 
initial like this. And in case you were wondering what that pin is for next to the crank, we're gonna find out. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's where this jobby goes. Look at that. Looky here. So. And then the chain tensioner that comes into your block, sticking through here, pressing on that. Presses on that and then keeps everything. And, and remember, this is going to be a little bit higher. It's going to be a chain tensioner here, so everything's going to be nice and cool. All right, so two final pieces. Okay, you get that. Super important to get that. Get the a little light washer is not the in there. A little washer. And then I've got this, I've got my little pliers set the wrong way, but I'll do my best. What, what you want to do is make sure that, 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 um, that the tension is, is proper. There you go. And there it is. So we have this secondary piece done. Chain is still on it. And uh, yeah, this, sh this should set us up for the next phase, which I hope we will be able to do this week. Um, good to go. Anything else? What do you think we left? I think it looks really good. I think we've got uh, yeah. a lot of progress. Happy with it's progress. almost starting to look like an engine. It almost is. And uh, I'm going to leave this set up here because I hope we can make some progress uh, this week. Got the family leaving, so we're going to have time to focus, get all the parts organized, clean them up, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, man.